ran to a city bridge and suddenly had a strange thought. I just felt like I wanted to end all this. I sat down at the very edge and watched the water for a long time. It seemed to hypnotize me. Since I was a little girl, I knew I had superpowers. Just nobody understood this. That day, I was about to go to school for the first time. I was so nervous. My mom and I spent a whole month choosing an outfit for me. But just before I left, I reached for my favorite toy, Ricky the Unicorn, anyway. I would be less scared with him, as I never leave home without Ricky. Hey, what are you doing? You're a grown-up girl already. My mom wondered. No one can be too grown up for unicorns. I replied. But when I entered the class, trembling in worry, I indeed saw I definitely did not look as a grown-up girl. And the unicorn was not the only reason. It seemed everyone was a couple of years older than me, and I looked like a baby. Maybe that was the reason no one wanted to play with me that day. I hugged Ricky and could barely hold the tears back. I decided I would not tell my classmates about my superpower yet. You just need to grow up a little bit, my mom said as I returned home, but that did not help. A couple of years later, I still looked the same little girl, and my classmates still did not want to be friends with me. They kept on calling me mocking names, and I could not understand where to run from that all. Ricky remained my best friend, my only friend. One day, when I was getting ready for school, my mom said that we were going to a different place instead. Hooray! I jumped into the car without even asking where we were going. Anything would be better than school and my classmates. But soon my joy subsided because we stopped at the doors of a hospital. Mom, why are we here? I'm scared. The doctor turned out to be very cool. He asked me questions and even patted Ricky. Finally, someone liked my unicorn too. The doctor said something to my mom and she shrunk. She tried to retell me the doctor's words at home. Hmm, yes, indeed. That was exactly the way I felt, but it was my superpower. The next day, I was eager to go to school. Just as I entered the class, I immediately told everyone that my superpower was called autism. That is why I was different from you. And this did not mean... At the same moment, they started to laugh at me even worse. What superpower? You're just demented. They shouted from every corner. I could not understand why they were doing this to me. Everything suddenly became too bright, too close, too loud. No, I can't stand this. I ran home. I'd spent the entire evening in my room. It was hard to speak, even to mom. I just didn't know what to do. But by the next morning, I was sure I needed to appease my classmates. That could not go on the same way anymore. The next day, I came to class with a huge box of donuts. My heart was breaking my ribs. I put the box on one table and gestured everyone to try the donuts. But anyone did not even move. I swallowed nervously. Suddenly, one girl approached the box cautiously. Yes, try it. I will be your friend. But then Ralph, the main bully of her class, bawled out. Do you really want to be friends with this defective one? Hey, what is going on here? I was so tense I could not even speak. Suddenly, Ralph came to my box and turned it over demonstratively. All the donuts fell onto the floor. Why? My world seemed to collapse. I found it hard to breathe to speak, to be. I could not understand why I was like that. Why were they mocking my superpower? For the next few days, I did not leave home. All the time I was collecting the specks of strength to try again. Finally, I came to school and tried to behave as all the others did, as if I had no superpower. I tried so hard, but folks only laughed at me even more. Especially that jerk Ralph. It hurt so much. One break, Ralph approached me. 
I had a bad feeling, but there was nowhere to run. I took a deep breath. Hey, little one, still trying to be like all the others? He pointed out nastily. I was silent. Then why still carry that toy? Give it. And he <gasps> took my Ricky. No, not him. I was suffocating in helplessness. I felt so awful. <laughs> why does not anyone want to be my friend? I fled and ran as long as I could. Oh, why am I like that? For all my life, I believed I had a superpower. But why would I need it if it only makes everything worse? I'd run to a city bridge and suddenly had a strange thought. I just felt like I wanted to end all this. I sat down at the very edge and watched the water for a long time. It seemed to hypnotize me. This won't hurt. This. A hand landed on my shoulder. I shuddered and turned around. Mommy, how did you find me? I had almost... Mom hugged me close to her. Sorry. I'm sorry. I just didn't know what to do. It's alright, she whispered. I'd like to introduce you to someone. After that, we were driving for a long time. I was afraid to say anything. I felt that I disappointed my mom. That I disappointed everyone. But when we arrived, at first I could not even believe my eyes. Everyone there had superpowers. Yes, that was the place for me. That was a school for true superheroes. A boy approached me right away and gave his hand to greet me. Everyone was finally willing to become friends with me. I know many people think my superpower is an illness, but it's not like that. I am able to love and be loved, just doing it in a big different way. And to be my friend, you don't have to do much. Just loving unicorns is enough. I stood on the roof of the school and laughed out loud. There was a fire burning in my palm. <laughs> and I slowly raised my hand up. Now everyone knows who Fire Girl is. Until a couple of weeks ago, everyone thought I was just a nerd. My younger brother Evan and I were late for class, and I took a sandwich out of my bag as I walked. I was about to hand it to Evan when someone snatched it out of my hand. It was Fat Joe. He took a big bite of the sandwich and told Evan that his nerdy sister wouldn't do anything anyway. The guys from Joe's gang laughed and left. I wanted to go to the principal, but Evan said he wouldn't help anyway. He'd already gone there. I was suddenly so hurt. I wish Dad was still alive. He would definitely protect us. When I entered the chemistry class, I saw the inscription nerd on my desk, and I could hear the laughter of my classmates from all sides. I didn't understand why I was so disliked at my new school. In the past, my dad always supported me on such occasions, but since he died, there's been no one to stand up for Evan and me. At the big break, I went out into the courtyard, but suddenly I saw a crowd of guys there. They were holding Evan and burning his backpack. I immediately rushed to my brother. I would definitely protect him this time, but the guys blocked my way and laughed mockingly. When the backpack burned down, Fat Joe told us not to relax. They would show me where Evan and I belong at this school, and they're gone. My brother and I were left alone, sobbing. I apologized for not being able to protect him, but my brother hugged me and said that it was alright. The guys were really stronger than us, and we were not superheroes. I took him to class and went back to the chemistry class. I couldn't concentrate in class. All I could think of was how to protect my Evan. I thought of my dad again. Thanks to him, I learned chemistry. He often said that chemistry was my superpower. And with its help, I would conquer the world. I wonder if chemistry could help me deal with abusers. And then I had an idea. But it had to be tested. So after school, I hid in the girls' locker room. Time was so maddeningly slow, but when the guard finally left, I tiptoed into the chemistry room. I carefully locked the door and exhaled. I took out the necessary regions and mixed them down. The liquid boiled, then covered with a crust of ice, and then it began to thicken. A drop fell on the table, and it began to melt. Wow, it was a good thing that I understood chemistry and knew how to handle this mixture. It could easily leave a burn. But I couldn't go everywhere with the flask. And then I noticed a rubber glove on the table. 
I put it on, carefully touched the liquid, and hooray! The rubber did not burn through. What if my hand became my weapon? And I completely dipped it in the solution. The next morning, the bullies were waiting for us outside the school. But this time, I was ready to meet them. I gathered all my willpower, jumped up to the fat guy, and abruptly pressed my hand to his cheek. The boys roared with laughter, but the fat guy suddenly screamed. The skin on his cheek was red, and there were huge blisters on it. His friend screamed in horror and ran away. Evan looked at me with admiration, and I was elated. I did it! As soon as we got home, Evan ran straight to his room and made something there for a long time. And then he brought me wings in the shape of fire. He said I was his new superhero, Fire Girl, and every superhero should have a cool costume. And you're right, I could become a real superhero. I was so excited by this that I immediately ran to the bathroom. It was good that my knowledge of chemistry was enough to make a real hair dye. So an hour later, I came out with fiery red curls. I even felt more confident. Evan said that our mom would appreciate it and immediately became sad. We hadn't seen much of her since our dad died because she was always working. I hugged Evan and told him that we would always be together and now I could protect him. In the morning, Fat Joe's gang was waiting for us outside the house. I put on my suit and gloves and went out to them. Apparently, they wanted to avenge yesterday. Well, if you didn't have enough, there you are. And as soon as they reached for me, I touched each of them with quick movements of my hands. They screamed so much. You'll know I'm a fire girl now. The one who protects the weak. When Evan and I arrived at the school, everyone greeted me with a round of applause. It turned out that someone had recorded me dealing with Fat Joe's scam, and now the fire girl was the star of the school. I couldn't believe it, because just yesterday, everyone was laughing at me and calling me nerd. Requests for help poured in from all sides. Then I decided to start a Fire Girl Instagram, and during the day, more than 100 messages were collected indirect. It turned out that there was so much evil in the school. I realized I had to protect the weak now. Every day I punished the bullies in the cafeteria, on the football field, at recess. Fire Girl could protect everyone. After that, the students began to tell their friends about me, and soon the whole city knew about me. After a couple of weeks, the name Fire Girl was already in the front pages of the newspapers. Drunk driver got what he deserved, Fire Girl punished the thief. I boasted to Evan that I had made the city a better place to live. At first, he was happy for me, but one day, when I got home late one more time, Evan said that because of my superhero activities, I not only put the school on hold, but also rarely communicated with him. Evan, it's not like that at all. Then he suggested that we played something together, like before. I agreed, but not for long. After all, I had a lot of requests indirect. We sat down on the console and began to play. The hero's hands were on fire, and I thought, if only Fire Girl could do this, then it would be so much easier to fight evil. And then I had an idea. I told Evan we'd finish playing later, and then I ran to the chemistry room. Fortunately, the door was open. I knew what to do. All I had to do was find the right reagent. Carefully, I added a few drops to my mixture. It burst into a bright flame, but it didn't burn me at all. Yes, now I will be able to protect not only our city, but the whole world. I went back and wanted to show it to Evan, but he was already asleep. However, I found a note on the door of my room. I'd like to see my sister more often. I was angry. How could he be so selfish? Other people actually needed help too. A message came to direct. So I immediately turned on the news. What was it? On TV, I saw the tearful wife of the famous millionaire. It turned out that her husband put her out on the street with the child. It was just a disgusting act. I couldn't wait to punish him. I ran to the millionaire's house where a crowd of journalists had already gathered. And here he was. Just the sight of him made my stomach boil. I slammed my fist down on the fence, and suddenly a spark from my palm spread to the dry branches nearby. The fire began to flare up, and a few seconds later, the house began to burn. Oh no! The reporters immediately turned the cameras on me. The reporter asked sharply, why did I, the savior of the city, set fire to the house of an innocent man? 
I didn't know what they were talking about. And then the journalist said that the millionaire's wife had just admitted on camera that she had lied and just wanted to frame her husband. Then I was taken aback. The journalist immediately bombarded me with questions and I had to run. My Instagram direct was also bursting with angry messages. Hey, but I tried so hard for you. And this millionaire was to blame for everything. Furious, I went home. And Evan yelled at me. He said that he had seen the footage and asked how I could have done it without understanding the situation. Stupid boy! Can't he see that without me, the city would be mired in crime? How can one mistake negate all good things? But he left, slamming the door. Heck, it was necessary to switch somehow. I went to Instagram, but all the haters were there. Suddenly, in one message, I saw a photo of our principal on the roof of the school. Anonymous wrote that he was hiding something <gasps> illegal there. It's a go. I would punish the principal. And so I would prove to everyone that Fire Girl was on the guard of the city and they could rely on her. I immediately ran to the school. At the bottom was a crowd of students. Strange. What were they doing here? There was no time to sort it out. I went up to the roof and saw the principal there. Now you will be responsible for everything. I held out my hand with the flame burning on it. No one escapes justice. But suddenly I heard footsteps behind me. I turned around and saw my brother. What was he doing here? Evan suddenly started begging me to stop. I pushed him away. Stay out of adult business. But suddenly, what was it? I heard a high-pitched scream. It was Evan. Because of my push, he lost his balance and fell off the roof. I immediately went down the fire escape and prayed that he was all right. I pushed through the crowd of students and tried to feel for a pulse. Come on, Evan. Come on. I clung to him and heard a faint moan. He was breathing. He was very lucky he fell on some soft bushes. Then the principal ran up to us and called an ambulance. I shouted it if it wasn't for his dirty deeds. Nothing would have happened to my brother. But he just looked at me in surprise and said that he wanted to make a holiday on the roof of the school. I suddenly felt dizzy. God, was I wrong again? The doctors put Evan in the car and we drove to the hospital. I took off my fire glove and squeezed my brother's hand tightly. As we drove, I noticed a ruined city in the window. It looked like someone had tried to burn it. And then it hit me. It was me. I was so busy playing superhero that I didn't even notice how much damage I'd done. Tears welled up in my eyes. Evan, if you could just wake up, I'd do it differently. Suddenly, he opened his eyes. <laughs> How happy I was. I leaned into him and whispered softly that the only thing I wanted now was to be a good sister to him. Evan smiled at me and I gave him a big hug.